On the left, I have the iPhone 15 with the latest iOS 17 version installed on it. And on the right, I have the iPhone 15 Plus with the latest iOS 8 data installed on it. There are major differences between them. As you have noticed on the main settings page, app menus have been rearranged a lot. Frequently used menus like battery, general, accessibility, camera, etc. are arranged at the top. Speaking of top, when you tap on your name, Apple ID has been replaced by Apple account. And when you tap on iCloud, the UI has been changed completely with a tiles menu system with your name on the top left corner. Also going into the storage menu, a cool new animation has been added above the storage bar. Even the top four menus below get similar animation up top. And if we go back to the Apple ID slash account menu, the sign in with Apple and the sign in and security menu of iOS 17 has been added in the main page of iOS 18 at the bottom for easy access. The battery menu also gets a major new feature. The charging optimization has been replaced by charging. And if we tap on it, we get a brand new charging system. Before you had the option to charge up to 80%, but now you have a charging scale limit from 80 to 100% with a 5% increment toggle. Also, the optimized battery charging only works at 100%. The toggle gets disabled if you select any other option below 100% on the charge limit scale. After the battery, the general section gets a description bar up top with some minor rearrangement in the position of the menus. Also, icons are added on the left of the menu bar just like the main settings page. The never-ending app list in the iOS 17 settings has been replaced by a separate apps menu in the iOS 18 at the bottom with the alphabetically arranged slider on the right side for easy app access. Also, the search section in the settings app of iOS 18 shows a lot of useful information, similar to the home screen search of iOS 17, with suggestions at the top and recently used menus added below. Speaking of menus, the passwords menu in the iOS 17 settings gets its standalone app in the iOS 18 version. It opens via Face ID, just like the previous iOS 17 version, and the UI is similar to the iCloud menu in the new iOS 18 which we discussed earlier in the settings app. I like this version of passwords better than the previous iOS 17 version, which included all the passwords in the list view. Speaking of apps, the phone app in iOS 18 finally gets the T9 dialing option. If we enter the phone number, contact suggestions start appearing below it. Tap on the name and the entire number gets entered for quick calling. Also, when we open the Safari browser, the bottom left AA icon has been changed to a new icon. When we tap on it, the browser settings menu of the iOS 17 has been collapsed below in the iOS 18 version, which also dims down the website brightness. With only search and text size options shown predominantly at the bottom, all the other settings are added in the three dot icons in the bottom right corner. In the Messages app, there is a text button added in the iOS 18 version above the keyboard section on the right, where you can make the entire text bold, italic, underlined, striked out, and many text effects option to choose from with the preview animation menu below. You can now schedule message up to 14 days in advance by tapping on plus icon on the left, and then swipe up to tap on send later. Here you can select the date and time of the day to deliver the message in advance. Another app which received a small UI update is the calendar app, where instead of gray dots in the iOS 17, the events are highlighted with a blue bar below the dates in the iOS 18 version. You can also pinch in and out to make the calendar size big and small as per your choice. And when you create a new event in calendar, you get a new reminder option which is integrated in the calendar app, which is a very useful feature that adds a reminder toggle in the calendar app itself. The Photos app gets a complete new redesign in the iOS 18 version, which at first will be difficult to get used to it. Let us compare both versions one by one, the select button on top in iOS 17 is replaced by search button in iOS 18. To select in the new Photos app, you have to swipe down to go into Library View, and the search will split into small search icon and select button. The three-dot menu up top in iOS 17 has been shifted to the bottom left corner of iOS 18 with a double arrow icon with screenshot filter added into it. On the top right, you have the Photos mini settings menu where you can check your iCloud Photos sync data along with additional Photos app settings. And at the bottom, the Years, Months, and All Photos section is similar to iOS 17. Except the Days section from iOS 17 gets a separate Recent Days section in iOS 18 when we swipe up or click the cross icon in the bottom right. Like for example, 
When I went to a Nike running event in Mumbai, it shows the entire day's summary with a movie preview at the top. I do not have enough media in this iPhone, else you can even swipe left and right to view previous day's summary as well. Also, the photo and video playback UI has been completely changed, which I like a lot. When you tap to open any image, it does not fit the screen and has a thumbnail-like border to it. With edit button on top and iOS 17 shifted down to the bottom section in the iOS 18 for easy access. To fit the full screen, you can tap on it once. Location has got a bold font to it and it's been aligned to the left-hand side. Unlike the center position in the iOS 17 version, also the video section is quite different. Scrubbing through the video is much easy with the new slider with the mute icon besides it. In iOS 17, the video plays for a single time. While it's on a continuous loop in the iOS 18 version, when we edit photo or video, I wish the cancel and done button at the top of iOS 17 should have been placed at the bottom in iOS 18, that would have been nice instead of reaching out at the top. And if we go back to the main photos page, you can swipe up, down, left and right for many more collections and customize option, which I think deserves a separate photos video on its own. So make sure to subscribe to TechLoper so that you don't miss out on upcoming iPhone videos. The next app that has surprisingly received a major update is the Calculator app. Firstly, there is a small icon change from outside, and on the inside you have many major upgrades. Starting at the top left, now you can view calculation history by tapping on the top left icon which is a very handy feature. In iOS 17 calculator, if we entered few digits by mistake, you either had to tap on clear icon to delete the entire number, or swipe left slash right on the number to erase one digit at a time. But now in iOS 18 calculator app, when you enter any digit, the AC icon gets automatically converted to delete icon which I found to be very useful. And the big zero button in iOS 17 gets split into calculator icon and zero icon separately in iOS 18. Tap on it, and you can do scientific calculations, convert various parameters from the list, and do real-time calculations using the math notes menu, which also deserves its own separate video. Stay tuned for its separate calculator video as well. The next app in the list is the Notes app, where when you create a new note, the camera icon is converted to a clip icon. It has two extra menu options, where the Attach File menu uses the data from the Files app of the iPhone to import in the note. And the Record Audio menu records audio conversations slash discussion, which even gives live transcription as you speak using the caption-like icon in the bottom left corner. Also, if we open any games on your iPhone, Game mode gets turned on automatically in the iOS 18 version, which pauses background activity to optimize the game performance. Also improving latency if connected to any wireless Bluetooth controller or AirPods. And the most important feature I missed when I switched to iPhone was the app lock and hide feature, which is now possible in the iOS 18 version. To enable it, tap and hold any application and you will find a require face ID option. Tap on it and select require face ID. And now you can only open this app via Face ID. And if you install any third-party apps other than default iPhone apps, you will get a hide and require Face ID menu. And if you select it, the app will be hidden from home screen and also from search option in the app library. The app can only be visible at the bottom of the app library using your Face ID. Also, when we swipe up to the home screen and tap and hold the turn on jiggle mode, we can finally place app icons anywhere on the home screen in the iOS 18 version. We can even resize the widget size straight from the home screen instead of deleting it in iOS 17 and adding back new widgets from the top left. Speaking of plus icon, it has been changed to edit button with a new customized menu added below. Now you can change the theme of the icon based on dark and light mode. Even give a unique look with the new tinted option where you can use the two sliders to choose the color of your choice and increase or decrease the saturation down below. You can even use the color picker icon to choose any color from the home screen wallpaper. You can even dim the wallpaper background even more using the icon on the left to enhance the dark mode even more. But there's more, you can hide the app icon names using the large menu to give the home screen a minimalistic look. I can't wait to try different combinations to customize my iPhone home screen. Speaking of customization, the control center of iOS 17 Center has been completely revamped with a new circular theme style in the iOS 18 version. To change any shortcuts in the iOS 17, you had to go to the Settings app, go to Control Center and tap on plus sign to add icons from the limited list of controls. 
and to rearrange the positions you had to use the slider option in the settings app again, which I found quite annoying to use. But now in the new control center of iOS 18, we get two new icon at the top. On the right we have a power icon which we can use it to quickly power off your iPhone, instead of going to settings, general, and slide all the way down a tap on the shutdown menu. And on the top left you get a plus icon, which turns on edit mode for the control center where you can change size of almost all icons and place anywhere just like the home screen. You can add new controls using the add a control button at the bottom, where you can choose from a lot of options, unlike the previous limited options in the iOS 17 version. And if you swipe, there are even more control pages like music and connectivity controls which you can edit and change as per your choice. The next UI change related to the control center can be seen using an app called FaceTime. When we use FaceTime and go to the control center, you can see that in the iOS 17 we used to have two huge tabs at the top for video effects and mic modes. And to preview and make changes, you had to tap and hold each tab to select different options. But now in the iOS 18, the control center gets a brand new animation menu for audio effects along with video preview. And the menu is arranged in the list view so you can select both audio and video effects all at the same time. Now let's go to the lock screen. When you tap and hold to customize the lock screen, in the iOS 17 version you get depth effect icon and appearance menu to choose, but in the iOS 18 version, you get two new options at the bottom. You can now change the default lock screen shortcuts from the list of various shortcuts by tapping on the plus icon. Since we can swipe left on the iPhone lock screen to open the camera, I replaced it with Shazam icon for music recognition. You can even open any app of your choice using the shortcuts icon from a list. Also, if you tap on the time and tap on the globe icon, you get to choose from many more font styles than the previous iOS version. You also get to choose a new color gradient option down below. That's it. These are the major difference between the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus running on the iOS 17 and iOS 18 respectively. Don't forget to subscribe to TechLoper for more upcoming iPhone tech perks that works.